Hi there, I'm Fred Sweet. Welcome to Guitar Media's Recording Red House video. In this video, we take a look at the 2011 USA Stratocaster Deluxe HSS and Sienna Burst and the 1969 Gibson SG Standard in Walnut. Now, I used to own a 1966 Stratocaster, which that was the first large headstock Stratocaster, which is awesome for recording Hendrix, and also a 1965. Sadly, I had to sell them to invest in real estate. But anyways, the reason why we're using the HSS here today is, interesting enough, this guitar gets what sounds like an out-of-phase tone here in between the humbucker in the middle position, which, you know, Jimi Hendrix, he used a, a three pickup SG Custom, and in the middle position on those original 60s guitars, it adds sort of an out-of-phase sound. And so we thought that was a great idea. And then obviously the 69 SG, um, although it's not a custom, um, which that's another thing. I had the 69 SG custom three pickup, but sadly I had to sell it to, to invest in real estate. And actually the guy was nice enough to trade me this guitar. And I think it was a 1971 Telecaster, which I cashed in on big time. So it all worked out. But anyways, so we record this guitar. What we do is we plug the guitar into the PV QF131 31 band graphic equalizer. And then we use that to boost the guitar and go out of the equalizer into the 1965 Fender Pro Reverb. And then we jump out of the 1965 Fender Pro Reverb into the Worm 24 volt electro harmonics analog phaser slash vibrato slash Ottawa and we actually use the Ottawa function and then we we go out of the Ottawa into the 1971 blues breaker and we play the 1971 blues breaker with the Celestian pre roller G12 H30s and then record that with an Natty RSM4 ribbon microphone. And then here in the jam room, we're actually using the Celestian Sidewinder 15-inch speaker and also with the Pro Reverb as well as another Celestian Sidewinder 15-inch speaker in the recording room. Now we're recording that speaker using a Sennheiser E609 microphone. Also with the, the separation, the convenient separation of the recording room and the jam room, it allows us to use this monitor for the backing track without having to use a headset for recording. I just wanted to add that typically when recording Hendrix songs, you know, we would use a Jam P100 or a Marshall Super Lead. And a lot of people have made the discovery of the Super Bass and it really... The Super Bass is great, a great way to record Hendrix, and really, what really puts the Super Bass ahead of so many other amps when recording Hendrix, you can actually use like a treble booster or a distortion in front of the amp and boost it with a Stratocaster, and it, and it sort of, the Super Bass ha has the ability to sort of renormalize the frequency response and make a full sound with a Stratocaster. And a friend of mine actually had a Marshall 415 cabinet. And I, you know, I tried the, I think what he had was the 1967 Super PA, um, which is the eight inputter. Someone had modded it to a super bass spec, eliminating the first valve. Yeah, it was really, really awesome. I, I used my Morley Distortion to drive the amp and and at the time I had I believe it was my 1965 Stratocaster and it was a really great way to get sustain and and the 15 inch speakers worked really great well so anyways uh once again sadly I sold my super lead to invest in real estate and I also wanted to add that we're using the 
We're actually running the 1965 Pro Reverb on 110 volts, and we're using a Variac to dial the wall voltage, which would normally be 120 volts, roughly, back to 110 volts. And this is very important. With a lot of classic amplifiers, if you boost them or run them very hard like we are, running them wide open and then, and then even sending them a, a more powerful signal, overdriving the front of the amp and the output tubes, the Variac actually allows you to dial the voltage back and keep the amp in a safe operating temperature. And it's it's got a lot to do with the high voltages in the amp, the output tubes and the transformers. You know, the Variac can allow you to dial the voltage back to keep the output tubes and the transformers operating at a safe temperature. So that's very important. Now with the blues breaker, that's it's just not necessary with that amp. Now a lot of you know a lot of JMP super leads and Marshall majors, and even 50 watt amps, it is absolutely necessary, especially run running on USA voltages to use a Variac to dial it back. But the reason why it's not necessary on that vintage Marshall amp is because. It only has a plate voltage of 400 volts, which is well within the safe range of a 6L6, and that's just running on regular wall voltage. Yeah, so a lot of lead amps are going to be in the 450 plate voltage range, which is right at the end. We've actually blown output tubes in the past not using a Variac on lead amps, and this a lot of super leads, they get up there closer to 500 volts on the plates which is definitely in the danger zone for EL34s. And they really don't last long. A lot of times on U.S. voltages, you, you see people replacing the EL34s annually or quite often because they, they actually just burn up. Enjoy the demo.
Thanks for watching and check our channel for our latest videos.